we want to begin to look at what we call the felt sense and at Dr. Jenlin's unique contribution in this area. And the best way to appreciate what uh, Gene Jenlin has done is to think of him as a map maker. We, we thought we had a pretty complete map of how human beings know. Um, we know that we think, and we know that we have emotions or feelings, and we know that we have body sensations. And it's like that's, that covers a great huge chunk of the map of how human beings know. And then there's a vague area that Freud and Jung call the unconscious, and nobody's really terribly clear on that, but it's a way to try to get at something that we, we sort of sense is there. Now, what Jenlin found is he began to realize that meaning is not only thought in the mind, but it's felt in the body. For example, if, if you walk into a room filled with strangers and suddenly you have an intense dislike for one individual in that room whom you've never seen before, and you don't know why or you don't know what it's all about, you just know that I don't like this person. See? It's like there is a meaning that is in your body and right away it's there even though you don't know what it is. You don't know what it's all about. It's just like the lady I told you about uh, in the exercise I gave the other day. I was in a room with her, and I had her ask herself that question. My life is going fine these days, in, isn't it? And bang, tears. See? And she didn't know why there were tears. So what Jenlin realized is that part of how we know is that there's a meaning that's not just known in the mind, but it's felt in the body. And this felt meaning, and he called it a felt sense, is always more than any emotion that may be the doorway into it. And right away he began to realize that whatever this world of felt meaning is in our bodies, it's more than any emotion that might express it. It's that the emotion is the doorway in to this whole area of felt meaning. Like, it's, an emotion is pretty much all the same thing with a volume control. You can go from mild in irritation to vengeful rage, and it's, it's all of the same type, but it's got a volume control on it. Whereas this area down here is internally complex. If you think about someone whom you really love, you know that they're simultaneously cuddly and warm and irritating and annoying. You know that? It's, it's, it's internal. You feel that. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's internally complex. It's not just all one thing. Now, why is the felt sense uh, so important? Because the potential for change lies in the felt sense, not in the emotion. The emotion is a doorway into the felt sense. The emotion rides on it like... Yeah. It's a doorway it in, but it is not the felt sense. The potential for change lies in that internally fuzzy, complex, multifaceted way of knowing that Jenlin called the felt sense. And we need to appreciate that because one of the reasons many people are afraid of the felt sense, you know, they don't want to feel the feeling because all they do is feel it and go around in a circle in it, and they never go into and through it into this more complex, vague, fuzzy area where the potential for change lies. When there is this more down here, when a symbol comes and touches it, something happens and it moves forward. And the fascinating thing that Jenlin discovered is that the symbol, it can be a word, it can be an image, it can be whatever. But what he found was that whatever that symbol is, it's not like there's a mirror image of it down here. And all you've got to do is get the right symbol and bang, this thing comes into, into awareness. It's not like there's some hidden conceptual unit down here that's the same as the symbol. And all you've got to do is get the right symbol and bang, this comes out. What he found is that there is not an equation between the symbol and the felt sense. 
and this was sheer genius on his part, he said there is an interaction between the symbol and the felt sense. And when the symbol touches the felt sense, it can move forward. That, that was just critical in his, his development of personality theory because then it became very clear that this world, this continent of how we know in a body way is meant to move forward. Its very nature is to move, not to be a conceptual content. Its very nature is movement. And when you take that and translate that into the whole realm of what is spirit, who, what is God, you're into the whole realm of a movement. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We are this movement. See, we always...